So a few days back, I got wind of a very devastating news, a very heart-wrenching one. It is the sad story of late Mrs. Chinyere Oguduro and her brother Mr. Ifani, who were set ablaze and burned to death by Mr. Benjamin, her husband of 10 years. Shortly, I mean a few hours after she had arrived in Nigeria from the UK. Chinyere, a native of Imo State and a mother of four, resided in Scotland before this tragic incident. Although she was still legally married to Mr. Benjamin, their marriage was marred and characterized by several incidences of violence. Report has it that Mr. Benjamin has always been controlling, insecure, and exhibited violent tendencies towards Mrs. Chinyere, his wife and mother of his four children. There was this particular incident where it was reported that Mr. Benjamin chased his wife all around with a machete while she screamed and ran for her dear life. The signs were there. The disaster loomed. But sadly, very sadly, she stayed. She remained with him. Report has it that Chinyere has always been the industrious partner in that marriage, somewhat of a, a breadwinner. Chinyere used to work at the bank and had risen to the position of manager and felt that her family deserved a better opportunity. Hence, she resigned and relocated to the United Kingdom. While in Nigeria, her husband, Mr. Benjamin, was an accountant at a firm, a job which his wife is reported to have secured for him. Chinyere was that strong woman who protected and provided for her family. She was that wife who covered the inadequacies of her husband. A woman with a tough skin, a lion skin, an Amazon. And in fact, the family house which she was born and killed in, the house that sheltered her husband who took her life, was said to have been built by Chinyere single-handedly. So back to this sad story, when Mrs. Chinyere relocated to the United Kingdom, reports are quite sketchy as to how it played out with her husband. One report has it that Mr. Benjamin joined in the relocation and shortly he came back to Nigeria. Another source says that he never relocated with his wife and children. But be that as it may, as at the point when Mrs. Chinyere came to Nigeria, Mr. Benjamin was already in Nigeria, waiting for her, had thought out his evil plan, had premeditated the mother of his wife and mother of his four children. So before Chinyere and her family relocated, they used to live at a rented apartment somewhere in the Dokwemu area of Lagos. Chinyere managed to struggle, saved, worked her fingers down to the bones, and had managed to build a comfortable apartment at the Abuledo area of Lagos. In the course of the year, Chinyere got wind of the information that her husband was trying to sell the property, the building that Chinyere had single-handedly erected with her finances. This he was trying to do without her knowledge, without her consent, and of course without her endorsement. Unfortunately for him, his plans to dispose of his wife's house failed as all the documents were registered in Mrs. Chinyere's name, much to his anger and chagrin, who felt he has the right to not only own but to dispose his wife's properties, who felt insulted and betrayed that his wife would acquire a property without making him the official owner, thereby giving him the right to sell it at will. Thus, he started to plot an evil and vile plan, a plan to take that one thing that he is incapable of giving, her life. So on this fateful day, Chinyere had departed from the UK. She had bidded her kids goodbye, probably giving them kisses on the cheeks, and assured them that she was going to return in a very short time. After which, she departed for Nigeria. Little did she know that that was the last time that she was ever going to set her eyes on her children. So at about 10 p.m. on that fateful, tragic day, Chinyere and her brother had returned home and driven into the compound. And at the time when they arrived, Benjamin, her husband, was not at home. He was reported to have been at a nearby bar drinking with his friends. So later on in the night, Benjamin arrived and started up an argument, a confrontation with his wife Chinyere and her brother. He rained abuses on them and accused them of locking him outside the house. 
So Mrs. Chinyere and her brother Ifani were reported to have just ignored him. They didn't give him the fight he was looking for. They didn't insult him back when he'd hurled abuses at them. But they just basically kept their mouth shut and let him to vent and insult them as he always used to do. Mrs. Chinyere, however, told him that he had a spare key to the house and they possibly couldn't have locked him out because he could have used his spare key to gain entrance into the house. And to Chinyere, it was just one of the many usual arguments that happened. Little did she know that Mr. Benjamin had an evil plan up his sleeves. So after that incident, they had gone to bed. But there's something very worthy to note here. Mrs. Chinyere and her brother, her younger brother, Mr. Ifani, were in the same room when they were born. Not Mrs. Chinyere alone. Not Mrs. Chinyere and her husband. Mrs. Chinyere and her younger brother. It is not usual for a woman to sleep in the same room with her brother when there are other rooms in the house. So for Mrs. Chinyere to have been born in the same room with her brother, it depicts the fact that she must have been overwhelmed with fear and needed some sort of protection from her brother. Hence, she asked him to come and share a room with her just in case Mr. Benjamin would come in to attack her in the night. This was a level of fear. This was a level of apprehension that Mrs. Chinere lived in. And why she chose to remain in a marriage where she couldn't feel safe under the same roof with the man she called husband is a mystery that we may never be able to unravel. So there Mrs. Chinere was in the same room with her younger brother, Mr. Ifani. And at about 1 a.m. in the wheeze of the morning, Mr. Benjamin was alleged to have gone to the back of the house where the generating sets, the generators, were said to have been kept and got himself a sizable quantity of PMS. He gained entry into the room where his wife and her brother were peacefully sleeping, unsuspecting, of what was about to befall them. He doused the room with fuel, soaked them with a good number of it, and before they could say Jack, he lit up a match, set them ablaze, dashed out of the room, locked the room from the outside to eliminate any possibility of an escape. And when he was certain that the inferno had gained momentum from that room where his wife and her brother laid, he ran out of the house and started screaming fire in a calculated show of pretense as though the house had caught a fire by itself and he had barely managed to escape. It is worthy of note to mention that Mr. Benjamin had earlier disconnected the water supply to the house so the taps were not running. He had to ensure that Mrs. Chinere and her poor brother Ifani had no chance at survival, had no opportunity to even quell the fire from inside. This plot was very premeditated and planned. And to him, he just executed a clean murder. But little did he know that he was about to run out of luck. Because despite Mrs. Chinere, his wife, was burned to death on the spot and didn't make it out, her brother, his brother-in-law, Mr. Ifanye, survived the arson and was sure to give a very detailed account of what had happened before sadly he passed on. It was as though the creator was like, there is no way I'm going to let this man go scot-free because Ifani was born beyond recognition. His surviving a second after that incident was already a miracle. It was as though God kept him to expose the evil of this man before he gave in to his wounds. Because had there been no accounts of Ifani, who knows? Mr. Benjamin just might have gotten away with this crime. You know how Nigeria can be with forensics and investigation. Possibly the authorities would have just passed it off as a normal fire incident. But Mr. Ifani spoke and he spoke the truth before he passed. So there came the sad end of two children from the same parents, the same family. There was Chinere on the one hand, strong, industrious mother of four and the first daughter of her family. And the young Mr. Ifani were only 31 years old, the only son of his family, a father of a one-year-old child with a pregnant wife. You can see the trail of sorrow that Mr. Benjamin had left behind just because of jealousy and insecurity. Let us hear Mr. Ifani's very young widow speak. How do I get to tell my kids that their father died? He didn't die in an accident. He didn't, he wasn't sick. How, how would I get myself to tell them that he was born? 
How do I get to tell them that I was born? How? My name is Princess Mona Njokuri. I'm the wife of late Mr. Ifani Njokuri, the deceased who was killed al alongside the sister, late Mrs. Magella Chinyere Ogudo. I've been married to my husband for two years. We have a son a year and five months old. And I'm currently expectant. And I don't know how it's going to be for me. I don't know, coupled with the fact that I'm a young girl. I don't know, I don't know. See this happening, I never thought it's going to be me. I never thought it's going to be me. Before my husband died, he gave an account of what happened. In the message, he said, they came in and they were, they were sleeping. They were in the visitor's room, him and his sister. The sister was lying in bed and he was lying on the floor. So Miss walked in and um, started um, accusing them of locking him outside. And they, and they said they didn't lock him outside, that he has his own spare key. He started insulting them. My husband said they didn't talk anything, him and his sister. Then he left. They were now sleeping. The man walked in, they were fast asleep, poured them fuel, lit them up and locked the door. He went outside, shouting, fire is, is burning in my house, I want to face, pour me water, pour me water. Without telling people, so people's focus were on him. They didn't know that there were people inside. My husband was struggling, he was burning, his sister was burning, so he was trying to open the door. Before he could open the door and come out, he has already turned white, so he had to start telling people. So people, people were now bringing water from outside the compound because he had already disconnected the water. So there was no water in that compound. So unfortunately, the sister died at the spot. My husband was rushed to the hospital. This is pathetic. The signs were there. The signs were screaming. The signs were all over the place. But sadly, Chinyere remained with this monster called husband. So then I ask, ladies, gentlemen, when is enough? When do you decide that it's enough? That it is just enough to take a walk? How bad does it have to get before you decide to take a walk to leave? There is hardly any husband or any man who just wakes up out of the blues and just kills his wife. Hardly. Except that person is maybe suffering from schizophrenia or is a mentally unstable person. It always takes a progression. It always starts from the baby steps. There are always, always, always signs. A shove there, some slaps here, kicks here and there, then a little pounding with a touch of kickboxing, chasing with machete, extreme verbal abuse. How much is too much? There are many things that hold people back, many factors that contribute in holding people back when they find themselves in an abusive marriage or an abusive space. Take for example, late Mrs. Chinere passed at the age of 48, some say 46, and she was married for 10 years. Hence, she got married at about 38 years old, which for an average Nigerian woman, she might term it as late. So it's possible Mrs. Chinere must have thought, after all I went through to finally find a man, the prayers, the fasting, going to the mountains, sowing of seeds, kissing several frogs, after all that I'd been through, and I finally found a man, and I'm now missus, and I'm now married, <laughs> giving up this marriage and becoming single again is not my best option. It's better I stay put there. Even if we are separated, let me just answer missus somebody. Even if we are living in different regions, let me stay put and be known as a missus. Or perhaps after four children, she may have asked herself, which man would look at me? How am I going to get remarried? Where am I going to start from after four children? I don't want my children to come from a broken home. The stigma of a broken home on the children. Let me stay for them. Let me endure for them. So how did that turn out? Mom is gone. Dad will be gone for a very long time. So the children have lost the marriage of their parents 
and they have lost the lives of their parents as well. So explain what we mean when we always say that we're staying for the children. Now, who are the biggest victims in all this tragedy? It's those children that we always try to protect, that we always tell ourselves we are staying for them. They are the ones that would suffer. And maybe if they don't suffer financially because of they are abroad, in a developed and structured system, they would suffer the loss, they would suffer the shame, they would suffer the stigma of children whose mother was killed by their own father. They would suffer the vacuum that has been created by the loss of their both parents. So staying for the kids, staying in a violent marriage, staying in an abusive marriage for the kids, as we always say, is it really in the kids' best interest? And so many religious leaders, instead of them to embrace the truth, Embrace reality. You hear many say God hates divorce. God hates divorce. Does he love murder? Does he love arson? Does he love violence? Does he love it? I'm going to make a very detailed video on when it is okay for a divorce or a separation to be considered. So watch out for that video. But you see, when a man is jealous or insecure about his wife's success and achievements, <laughs> it always ends up badly. A man with an inflated ego that cannot stand his wife doing better than him, that feels he is entitled to his wife's lives, her savings, her money, her properties, her investments, that feels that a woman will not submit to him if she is more financially placed than him. Such a man is a looming catastrophe waiting to happen. Traditionally in Africa, the man is supposed to be the one to provide for his family, a role that he had failed massively in. And he had a wife, a strong woman, who could step into his shoes, cover his shame and assist him. And instead of the emotions that he feels to be gratitude, rather it's pain, insecurity and jealousy. Such a man is very dangerous. It is worthy of note that Mr. Benjamin has now been apprehended and is cooling his feet at the state CID in Yaba. Investigations are still ongoing and he has not been formally charged yet. But he is said to have been pleading for forgiveness and blamed his action on the devil. The devil, the devil we speak about is inside you and I. And if you feed that devil, it will manifest in your actions. Actions that you and I should take full responsibility for and not to blame it on any external devils. Angels are you and I and devils are also you and I. Be sure that I will bring you more updates on this story as they unfold. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to like, drop your comments and subscribe to my channel. It's me your girl Barista Neze and this is Nezeville. I'll see you guys in my next one. For now, bye.